Today in this Minecraft video, I want to share with you five of the best features introduced so far in the Minecraft Nether Update 1.16. So welcome back everyone, my name is Echo and I hope you're having a great day. The features I'm sharing with you today are going to be huge game-changing experiences for Minecraft going forward. Now, I'm a big survival player, so this is something I'm highly looking forward to. The features I'm sharing with you today are gonna make survival a little bit more challenging. I think we can kind of agree over the past couple of updates, Minecraft has certainly become a lot easier to get fully geared. So this is gonna be taking it to the next level. Now, of course, I'm recording this in snapshot slash beta stages. So by the end of the update, my top five favorite features or the top five best changes could have changed by the end of the update. I'm actually recording this on Minecraft Java in the snapshot 20w12a. By the time you're watching this, there could have been a brand new snapshot introduced. I wanna ask you guys two things. The first thing I wanna ask you guys is, what is your favorite feature so far introduced in Nether Update? The second thing I wanna ask you is, what is that one feature you think needs to be introduced in the Nether Update? Let me know down below in the comment section. For me personally, I feel like we need a new hostile mob and you're gonna already see my favorite features in this update. So let's go to game and let me show you these features. So please remember guys, everything you see is subject to change. It's betas, it's snapshots, things get removed, tweaked and changed. But as I'm recording this on the 24th of March, 2020, these are going to be huge game changing features. Let's start off with the obvious one and probably one of the biggest game changing features for Minecraft in many, many years. This right here is called the Ancient Debris. Now these can be found, according to the wiki page, these can be found between levels eight and 22. These make exploring and adventuring and mining in Minecraft uh, a lot harder. And I like that because these are located predominantly underneath lava. Similar levels uh, to the overworld with diamonds. For probably, I don't know, forever, this has been the god tier armor in Minecraft. Now something Minecraft have now started to do is they are now pushing the boundaries of the game. I feel like the core game of Minecraft, the developers haven't wanted to change this or tweak this for, for, for a long time. Like for example, when they introduced the crossbow. Yeah, the crossbow sounded really, really cool. Everyone was like, oh my god, I can't wait to ditch a bow, I'm just gonna use a crossbow. In all fairness, I really don't see too many people using crossbows. You might use them, but personally from my experience, I haven't seen too many people using them. The other thing I want to talk about is when they introduced tridents, everyone was like, yeah, tridents are going to be better than, than diamond swords. I don't see too many people using tridents that often. They do serve a purpose in terms of getting the brown mushrooms, etc. But I think this is going to take Minecraft to the next level because you're not going to be wanting diamond armor anymore. The Minecraft player is going to want the netherite armor. This is god tier. Now, the good thing is, though, they haven't discontinued diamond armor. You still need to obtain this in order to obtain this, but it is going to take you quite some time. Now, from my experience with the ancient debris, I find them, if I'm lucky, in threes. I found them in threes. I've not found them in any more than threes. Um, typically, I find them in ones or twos. Now, these aren't like any kind of ingot. So if we type in iron, you know when you get one iron ore, you get one iron ingot. With this, you get one scrap. Now in order to make yourself one ingot, you are going to need four scraps, but that's not it. You also need four gold. So if we just go inside of here, here's a little bit more detail to this. In order for you to obtain, we need to grab ourselves the, the ingots here. Made a little bit of a mistake there and we'll type in uh, the netherite. In order for us to obtain one of these, we are going to need four gold and four scraps. Now in terms of the crafting recipe for this, which doesn't seem to want to give me one, you are going to have to do it like this and then like this. And this produces one of those. Now you're first off gonna to have to obtain diamond armor before you can even consider upgrading it. So if we grab ourselves this, that goes in there. Oh, you can't use this anymore. We have to use uh, this. So if we put this here, uh, this goes in here with one of these, then it gets upgraded. Now you're basically sacrificing your good diamond stuff and then transferring it to netherite. But like I said, that that you need four of these and four of these to obtain one of these. Then you're also gonna have to do one, 
two, three, and four. So if you think about it, it's going to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and it's going to be one, two, three, four. So you are going to need 16 of these before you can even contemplate getting yourself some armor. And this is where things get a little bit more decisive because if we just clear my inventory real quick, you then have to make the decision if you want to get netherite armor and which armor you should focus on. Typically, I'd probably focus on my chest plate and my leggings first since they're a little bit more expensive. But then you decide, hey, maybe I might want to get a, uh, the, the netherite pickaxe, the netherite sword, netherite shovel, netherite axe. You'd be crazy spending it on that. So this is going to make decision making. This, this one thing here is going to make decision making in Minecraft that extra bit harder and extra bit more important. So for me, this is number one. That's, they're not all in typical order, but this one is definitely going to be the biggest game changer for a long time in Minecraft's history. So this right here is called the Respawn Anchor. Now going back to Minecraft's history, this is called Crying Obsidian. This is a block that Jeb himself was a long time gonna introduce to the game for a way to respawn inside the nether. Now, in order to get this, you are going to need this. Now, you cannot do this in the overworld. The way, if you sleep in the nether with a bed, it blows up. If you activate one of these in the overworld, it will also blow up. And for today's video, we're not going to do that because I need to showcase the rest of these for today's video. So, in order to do this, you have the option to activate this. Now, each one of these symbolizes a life, and I'm not going to right-click on this because it will blow up. So, we'll go to the nether and I'll show you exactly how this works. So again, every single one symbolizes a life. You have four lives, and if you die four times, you will then respawn inside the overworld. I kind of like that idea as well. So if we grab ourselves some glowstone and we right click on this, we have four lives there. Again, two, three, and four. If we then right click with our hand, our respawn point has been set here. So for the sake of science today, if we change our game mode, forward slash game mode survival, we now have a respawnable method inside the nether. Again, this is going to be a huge game changer because the developers have told us that they physically want to make it possible for you to go directly in the nether at the start and live in here. Although we won't get pigs in here. He's just here for uh, the sake of today's video. So again, we've died. So we've already lost one life. If we do this again, we're going to end up dying again. Come on. Which means... We now only have two lives and they depleted. So this is going to be, this is definitely the second biggest change. I'm looking forward to when this update is fully released to trying to do a nether only survival experience. It's going to be hard, but it most certainly is going to be fun. So these next features might not be as of a big game changer as these ones, but I think they're going to offer something for the Minecraft player. Right here we have Crimson Fungus usually known as crimson fungi, and the same for the warped one as well. These can be grown into trees, but the most important thing about this is they have a, um, a farmable light source. This one hasn't generated with one. They have a farmable light source. Now, this light source is known as shroom light, and for me personally, it's going to replace glowstone in terms of, of using it because it's going to be a lot easier to obtain. However, they have, obviously, with this, you are still going to need glowstone, so I like the fact that introducing new features hasn't technically moved the other features to the side. In the past, things like that have happened. So I really, really like that. I like the fact that we have a farmable light source. If we just grab ourselves, uh, that's the wrong one. We're going to have to go crimson. Uh, I just like the fact that we have a renewable light source that is going to be great for making things so easy in terms of getting yourself light. So for me, that definitely is going to be the third big game changer for Minecraft. So this certainly is one of the newer features introduced. This is Nether Gold. So that's a new introduction of a new ore introduced inside the Nether. Is that the second one? Possibly third one introduced to the Nether? Maybe four? I can't remember. We don't really have too many ores inside of there. We could possibly do with one more. But it's a new place to find uh, gold. This is very good for multiple reasons. For one, it's a lot easier to obtain. Yes, you can still obtain it via Mesa Biomes, which has gold at unusual levels, although that does kind of nerf that a little bit more because it says here, this is according to the wiki, nether gold ore attempts to generate 10 times per chunk. In veins of sizes of 10 from levels 10 to 117 in all of the nether biomes. That is absolutely insane. If I go through there, 
it will not take me long to find nether gold. Now, in terms of how it works, well, it works pretty much the exact same as ordinary gold uh, in terms of smelting. It can be placed in a blast furnace, which is going to smelt it twice as fast as an ordinary furnace. Um, but obtaining it's going to be quite easy because in terms of uh, getting it, guys, if we grab ourselves the likes of fire resistance and you use a fire resistance potion inside of there, that you're pretty, you're pretty set. Stay away from your fortresses and stay away from the Soul Sand Valley, you should be okay. Soul Sand Valley's skeletons are there quite frequently, and it's the same um, for, well, what's this, this glass? It's the same for, uh, with the skeletons and stuff. So you can find these quite easily, and I like that. Another place to have gold. So this is also gonna be a game changer. It's gonna be like, right, let's go to the nether to grab ourselves some gold. Because a lot of people have explained that the nether, before this update, it's more of a chore. You go there because you wanna get yourself a beacon. After you have it, you don't really go back inside of there. Well, with these features, you kind of have a purpose now. So the last feature I want to share with you is bartering. This is a new type of trading. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because in terms of the trades that you can get, and more importantly, this is a combination of two things, bartering, but also gold as well. Gold is about to be like 90% more important in this next major update. So I hope you've been hoarding gold and gold armor and stuff like that in your Minecraft survival worlds. So we have a beautiful piglin here. They love gold, okay? You give them gold ingots or gold items, they're gonna wear them, they're gonna take them, and he's gonna barter with me. He's gonna throw a couple things and be like, yo, I'll take the gold. In return, he's gonna give me, well, fire charges. And here's a couple of things that we can get here. The reason why bartering is important is because you need crying obsidian. In order to have a respawn anchor, you're gonna need crying obsidian. You need crying obsidian and glowstone. But here's a set of other things that you can obtain inside of here. Uh, I like the fact that you can get fire charges and also magma cream as well. Uh, but these and a lot more can all be obtained via, via bartering. And getting into the gold. So the reason why gold is gonna be important, guys, is because the piglins themselves, they're quite frequently in the nether now. Not in this specific biome because this is the Soul Sand Valley. It's a dead biome and there's some gold there. I told you guys we would find nether gold incredibly easy because of its level. We're at level 58 and that one spawned at level 73. So yeah. Uh, and because you're going to have to have god tier armor now. So you're going to find a lot of people are going to have a maxed out armor set like this. The reason why is because if you're in survival, yeah, you can wear your diamond stuff and your, nether, your netherite stuff. But then you're a little bit more vulnerable if you're not wear if you're not wearing the gold stuff because these things will attack you. If you're not wearing the gold armor, they kind of see you as a threat. If you're wearing the gold armor, they're like, okay, he seems to be fine. Um, he just gave me them as well. That's pretty cool. Iron soul suit, soul speed boots. You can get them from trading. I think that's the only way you get them from trading. You also get enchanted books. So people are gonna now start using gold, and that's gonna change survival. For me previously. As a survival player, whenever I get gold, this kind of gold, whether it's from an XP farm, it just goes straight in in a blast furnace and into nuggets. You're not going to be needing to do that anymore. You're now going to have to have, well, there's going to be three decent sets of armor. You're going to want to start off your iron armor. Then you're going to want to have your diamond armor. Then most people are going to try and get netherite, and you're also going to need uh, gold. So you're technically going to need three good armors, diamond, netherite, and gold. And I like that. It gives gold a little bit more purpose. Hopefully in the future they give leather a little bit more of a purpose. Maybe iron, uh, not iron chain as well. So there's my top five features that are physically going to change Minecraft in terms of history forever. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it, guys. It's been a great update so far. Let me know in the comment section your favorite features and the features you would like to see. Have a great day. Stay beautiful. And I'll catch you all in the next video.